today? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how long we've been working. Yeah. didn't come from the blubber of the whale, it came from the head of the sperm whale. The blubber is for oily machinery, big huge wheels in the factories. So we don't kill whales anymore, so this is not replaceable. <laughs> so this compass would be <coughs> above the captain's bed. You want to make sure the ship was going in the right direction. So these, these clocks in the boxes, those are called chronometers. They were invented in 1763 by John Harrison. It took them 30 years to perfect the clock, so it was accurate enough. So they finally now could determine their longitude. So is it, it's probably not obvious how a clock can tell you distance, is it? It's not obvious. But you know California is three hours difference than here. Mm -hmm. It's about 3,000 miles to California. So every hour is 1,000 miles. So if you set your chronometer to London time and you sail west toward New York, in a few days you can take your sextant and check to see when the sun is the highest in the sky. Okay, the sun's going to go up and it's going to go down. When it's the highest in the sky, we call that noon. And then we look at the chronometer. If there's an hour difference, we've gone 1,000 miles. So it's a little bit of an oversimplification because the thousand miles works at the equator because it's 24,000 miles approximately, and 24 into 24,000 is 1,000. But up here where we are, 41 degrees latitude, it wouldn't be 1,000 miles. It would be maybe 851.2 miles. But charts tell you at your latitude what that hour difference represents in terms of t distance. Of course, with GPS today, hardly anyone uses the uh, chronometer, but it's good to have it as a backup. That's right. <laughs> so where are you all visiting from? Uh, Vestal, New York. Oh, that's a place where I have a lamp, an oil lamp made there. Oh. That's what they did back in the probably 1870s, 1880s. One of those, you know, kerosene. Uh -huh. It says Vestal, New York. Really? Oh, so you didn't know that they made lamps like that there? No. no. It's been a while ago. <laughs> yeah. The people in the museum down there would be interested in that though, because I don't know if they're even aware of it, although they might be. Yeah. Because yeah. we have a museum down there. It's right. So now what big city are you near? Like Binghamton. Binghamton, yeah. Yep. I had a sister who lived in Binghamton. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell best tell people that Vestal's a suburb of Right. Us. But then he he taught at Cornell. Mm -hmm. Which is nearby. Yeah. It's about 40 miles north. Yeah, Kevin originally lived in Ithaca when he got out of college. He lives in uh, Shelton now. It's Cornell. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Cornell. Cornell. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite pictures I got at a, a flea market. It shows a house in Albany County, New York, so somewhere in, around Albany. And it has this big house, 
and the father and the mother and the two sons, just like your sons. Are these your sons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're standing next to their prized possession. And that's the wagon and the four horses. You know, so they had the two horses to take them to market. Then maybe the next day they could take the other two horses and that was their transportation. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I love that picture. It just takes you back to when there were no cars, yeah. no horseless carriages. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Sure.